You might say, I don't believe in God, but I say, not possible. See, everyone has a God, whether or not it's the God of the gospel. You might not believe in God, but everyone has that one thing that's king. I mean, even the dictionary defines God as whatever we make supreme. Because it's a theme, it's a thread. You see it inside all human beings, the fact that we all worship. And no, it's not just about singing. Already, you probably like, Jeff, I don't worship. I put that on the shelf, but I say technically we all do. We just worship ourselves. Because we're all born with a bent inward. We all want to shine. I mean, think about it. What's a baby's first words? They're usually mine. Because we all worship something. To an object, we're all liable. Ladies, to some, your boyfriend is your God, and Cosmo is your Bible. Yet, we mock and we laugh at the Israelites' golden calf, but we do the same thing right back. It just looks a little different than that. So question, what's on your throne? What do you chase so that you don't feel alone? See, what defines you? What do you give ultimate worth? And what, if taken, would bring ultimate hurt? Now see, that is your God. But all of us, we sacrifice deep joy for shallow happiness. But to be honest, we look like fools. We're like full-grown adults in the kiddie pool going, oh my goodness, guys, <laughs> this is like so cool. <laughs> But see, we're slaves to our possessions. We're always craving something new. Reality check. If you can't give it up, you don't own it. It owns you. That's why the Bible, it says we're spiritual prostitutes. In fact, it even says we're worse. Because most prostitutes at least get paid for their works. All we get paid is a hearse. That's why worship, it's not just behavior. It goes way into our core. So ask yourself, what is your God? What do you bow down before? For example, some of us in here, we don't worship Jesus, but we worship what he said. We got theology in our head, but in our heart, poor, pitiful, naked, and dead. Or some of us worship in stadiums. Some of us worship in bars. See, some of us worship our possessions, while some of us worship our cars. See, some of us worship the sciences, while well, some of us worship the arts, but I don't care what clothes your idol's wearing, the disease is the heart. And this one's my favorite. The guys, they'll say, Jeff, I'm a man because I'm in control. Okay, then tell me, why can't you stop having sex with your hand while staring at your MacBook Pro? Or what about those guys who trade their wives for their jobs at work? Give more time to their boss than their wife's needs or hurts. And ladies... Ladies, no guy can love you more than Jesus already has. Stop putting your worth in Magic Mike. He's so much better than that. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, so Jeff, are you saying that we should hate money, hate alcohol, and never have sex? No, I'm saying God created them all to be enjoyed in their proper context. But see, I want to transition. I want to make a spiritual incision. Can we really say these things are the ultimate purpose of living? I mean, instead of worshiping the creator of you and I, we've all said, screw you, God, I'll take your stuff. But you can die. But that trade is terrible. Trading God for man. It's like God offers us water and we say, but God, this is such good sand. And I hear this one too. They say, a God that requires me to give up something, I just can't fathom. Yet most of us seem fine giving up everything for a quick orgasm. And my baseball buddies, they always say, Jeff, 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 you're a wimp because you run to God when times get hard. But I say, so do you, bro. You just run to the bar. I mean, am I the only one who's felt this gnawing within? Am I the only one who's felt the weight of my own sin? But see, here's what's unique. Go ahead and critique, but if you hear anything Hear this one thing that I speak. Where we exchange ourselves for God thinking we could be him, he exchanged himself for us, absorbing all our sin. And God literally put on flesh, and do you see how we treated him, the ultimate war veteran, because he was killed for our freedom. Nonetheless, he was thinking of you and me with every whip that beat him, knowing full well we'd still say, ah, Jesus, <laughs> nah, I don't really need him. 
but like a father. He couldn't bear his children to not be free. So he thought up that tree, paid our fee for specks of dirt like you and me. So my plea is let him restore his proper place. I promise he loves you right now. Just trust in his grace. Because before I leave, I'll leave you with this. What are those other things you worship took nails in their wrists? Or how about when's the last time money or sex forgave you? Or when's your boyfriend set you free from all you're enslaved to? See, what else died so that you could be made new? Or when's the last time the world promised satisfaction and actually came through? See, only Jesus can do that. That's why he is supreme. So church, turn your ear towards him and worship him in all things. Cling to the king and the salvation he brings. And when your mouth can't, let your life always sing.